On this episode, we're going to talk to the coolest panel in the game. And they're going to answer the question of who they think is going to be the next Dallas Cowboy head coach. And listen to this one. They have a shocker on who they think and what they think is going to happen to the next QB of the Dallas Cowboy. You should tune in. With that being said, you already know what to do. Get music. Introduce you to the coldest panel in the game. But wait, let's just get right into it. They're going to tell us who they think is going to be the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And they got another one that may be a shocker to you. Check this out. So I'm going to say this because I've been thinking about it. And if I'm the GM of the Dallas Cowboys, which is the owner. Yeah. I, it's, unfortunately, it's true. You know, with Jerry Jones being the owner, he acts as the GM. With no, he, that, he is said, the GM. He, he, right, he is. he is. He is. He is. And that's the problem in Dallas. So that being the problem in Dallas, I think there's a way to rectify that problem. There's a guy right now in college football by the name of Deion Sanders. And Deion Sanders, if he comes to Dallas, there's immediate buy-in from the players because they know he knows what it takes to win. As a player, he's won championships. And at the same time, it gives Jerry enough room to continue doing the, let's say it as it is, the stupid shit that he does. But it gives Dion a sense of winning back that locker room. And at the same time, it offers up a quandary. Do you take Shador in the first round if you're the probably third or fourth pick in the first round? That yes. being said, Dion, I think, makes an improvement upon Dallas in itself, and it allows Jerry to retain control. However, if Jerry's smart and he brings in a decent GM, not a, not a boot-licking kind of guy, but... One that's going to sit with them at the table and say, Jerry, we need to talk over some things. Then there's a great coach out there by the name of Ben Johnson, who's the Detroit offensive coordinator. Okay. With that being said, Ben stayed on with Detroit because what we're seeing with Detroit right now, it's been quite a ride and they're getting it done offensively. And Ben's got that way of weaving things together. So then he needs a defense coordinator, which I think if Ben Johnson's in there, you keep and retain Mike Zimmer. You don't like what Zimmer's doing? There's a guy by the name of Rex Ryan. Mm, yeah. I, I'm just I, saying. I, I, I see that. I see it. I'm looking more link. I'm looking more for Washington and Lincoln Riley. Okay, I like Let's that. Go young. Let's go young because the younger ones who know this offense now. Defensive wise, I, I would go. I would go get something more, more sturdy and more, um, more mainstream. But quarterback wise, Dak is gone. Shador is in. Mm -hmm. Now, how much is it going to cost to cut Dak? A lot. Because yeah. here's the problem: Dion doesn't want to come. In. Dion does not want to do the pros because he said they, it ruins him. Because when you got to pay for the game. It, they, these are grown men. He don't want to deal with grown men. They don't. They don't want to listen. So I'm looking at Lincoln Riley to gather this back up and be offensive minded to go get Shadour because Dion endorses Lincoln Riley. So why not get something that your daddy is going to endorse and go learn the game and play in the well, go play in the stadium your daddy helped pay for. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm a cowboy, not a radical. <laughs> 
If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, email us at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. I got my guy, Mama. I got my guy, Coach Twilight. And I got my guy, Daryl T. And it's me, Michael C., the source of light over the mic. All I got to do is say these four words. Now let's make it epic. Go Birds. Let's make this epic. If you like this episode, just think, are the Eagles contenders or pretenders?